Hey guys, this is Delphine here. Uh, today I'm doing an unboxing from Great Lakes Hornworms. Um, as you can probably assume by the name, I have gotten some hornworms from them. Um, so I'm excited. This is my newest feeder to try with Freddy. Um, I'm thinking it'll be very successful. It'll be a lot better than uh, feeding him a bunch of a uh, bunch of superworms and waxworms uh, because these are a lot higher in protein and moisture um, and a lot lower in fat than waxworms and they're still soft and easy to digest, which is good. Um, so I chose to go with these because right now I'm trying to get Freddy to eat more vegetables and it's not working out too well. So while I'm experimenting there, I want to make sure he's still being healthy on the insect front. I just don't want to feed him a bunch of crap. Um, but he does need to keep eating, so I'm going to try these out. Um, I've kept hornworms before. Uh, they tend to be a pest up here, especially with my tomato garden that I grow every year. Um, and so I tend to, well... The last time they came around, I collected all of the ones that I could find on my tobano plants, and I kept them and raised them. And now they don't show up anymore in my garden, because only one of them ended up turning into a moth. Alright, so let me open this up. Alright, it should be smooth sailing from here. So let's see what we got. Oh, look at they're so cute. Okay. These guys are pretty adorable if you haven't ever seen a hornworm. I'll just show you guys these. There's one right there on the edge. Here, I'll get the lid off. Alright guys, so right now these guys are pretty tiny. And as you can see, compared to my finger, they're not very big. But don't be fooled by their small size. These guys are some of the best feeders for adult bearded dragons especially. Because these guys get a good three, four inches, and they're big and meaty caterpillars when they get bigger. Um, they're perfectly harmless little guys too. As you can see, they have these little spikes on their butts, but they do absolutely nothing. They're just a little piece of flesh. These kids are really, really cute little guys. Won't focus for me though. Sucks. So you can see at the bottom there, that's their food. It's just a gelatin sort of thing. And you can see all their little poops too. Um, and so the best way to store these guys... There's one that's trying to get on my finger. Alright, so the best way to store these guys as recommended on the website... Hey buddy. Gotta be careful, he might try to eat me. He's got such a tiny mouth. Won't do anything. Yeah, I'm sorry about the focusing here, guys. There we go. So as you can see, this guy's really cute. There's his little head. He's got two tiny little beady eyes on there. His little caterpillar mouth. There's another. So not only are these guys really good feeders, but they're also really, really cute when they're babies. They're pretty easy to care for, especially if you buy from uh, Great Lakes Hornworms. They've got um, all the supplies you could possibly need, and it's all pretty, pretty uh, cheap. Shipping's a little expensive, but they do cover heat packs, cool packs, anything you need. Um, already included in the shipping price. So that's something you don't have to worry about yourself. Which is nice. Um, yeah, so these guys, if kept at a nice warm enough temperature, they will get nice and big really fast. Um, I really do want to breed these guys since they are great feeders because um, they have no exoskeleton, so they're all just mush, which makes them really easy to digest. And then they're not too bad when it comes to a, a nutritious level. Pretty nutritious, pretty high in protein. Not very high in fat at all. Sorry, his little suckers. You gotta get used to those. He's got the little feet. As you can see there, one. We're gonna have a terrible time here. Let me focus on that one. All right, so you can see they have these six little feet up front. And then on the back, you've got little sucker feet, 
which if you're not used to, can be a little alarming when they first suck onto you. I'm trying to guide these guys back down into the cage. Come on. Go on. Go on. Come on. There you go. No, come on, babe. Sorry about him. Right now they're trying to eat each other. So they start out pretty tiny. Um, they have a little bit of an odor. I can't tell if it's the poop or the food. Uh, but they usually don't have an odor, the caterpillars themselves. Because I've kept these guys before. Um, in the wild, they'd feed off of uh, tomato plants um, and other plants in the nightshade family. But as those plants are poisonous, at least the leaves, uh, you can't feed them that diet and feed them to your reptiles. So these ones here have been hatched and raised completely on a diet of um, safe vegetable matter so that they can be feeders. Uh, so you don't want to collect these guys out of your garden if you have them like I used to have because they have a diet of poisonous nightshade plant, tomato. These guys are pretty funny actually. Look at them. Doing a backflip. Boom. Yeah, so right now, pretty tiny. Uh, that one down there, right there, that's probably the biggest one an inch and a half. Uh, but like I said, if you keep these guys at a warm enough temperature, around 80, 85, they will just completely boost up. Um, this is one of their special hornworm cups. It comes with 25 of these little hornworms at this size and enough food to grow these guys up to about a good full two inches. So they'll get not too much bigger, so you won't be able to see them uh, reach adult size. Um, but they will get pretty big, and then of course when Freddy gets bigger, I'll uh, buy him more caterpillars of full-grown size. Um, and once these guys reach a size that you would like them to stay at, uh, you can really cool down their temperatures to slow down their growth. Or if you want them completely stagnant, not growing at all, you can put them on a regimen where you put them two days in the refrigerator, and then one day out of the refrigerator, and you can keep doing that over and over. Uh, until you're ready to feed them. That'll keep them nice and fresh, but they will not grow. Um, so I really do want to breed these guys, but the problem is, like all caterpillars, they have to uh, morph and turn into their final form, which for these guys is a moth. It's a big, big moth, too. Uh, I've had one of them. Like I said, when I had these guys, I own only one of the caterpillars I had turned into a moth, but it was a really big moth. Um, and so in order to breed... To actually breed them, you have to have the moths, and therefore you have to have a big, big screen cage for those big old moths. And if that's not bad enough that you have to have this giant space-consuming space cage, you also have to have a live tomato plant, um, at least within their scent, or they will not breed very productively at all. Uh, so that's what makes it hard to breed these guys. But Great Lakes Hornworms sells eggs uh, for a really nice price. They're not expensive at all. I think 50 eggs plus all the containers you'll need for their full size. Um, and you can, is about $10. And you can buy that with food already put into the containers for an extra $10. Uh, or you can buy the food separate. Um, it's just about the same price either way. And you can buy tons and tons of eggs for not even that expensive. I think you can get around 200 eggs for maybe $40 that's without food. Uh, so it is pretty cheap to buy these and grow them your, yourselves. Um, they don't require a uh, really hard incubation. Just keep them about uh, room temperature around the 70, high 70 degrees and they'll hatch uh, really easily. So yeah, these are my new feeders guys. Um, I, also, I also have some phoenix worms coming for Taz, the leopard gecko. Um, I'm finally moving her off of wax worms. I got a really good deal on uh, a lot of phoenix worms, so I'm going to be giving her those. I'll make a video when those guys shows up.